take this, take an opportunity before you jump out there and expect something great to happen is to do some self-reflection. Um, we all have gone through things before in our lives, and I'm sure that this COVID-19 isn't the first, you know, valley that we had to walk through. So the first thing I would tell that person is to look at some things in your life that mm -hmm. you've gotten through, some things that you've accomplished, oh. some great things that you've done in your life. Yes. Use that as a foundation to catapult, to give you the confidence to get through what you're going through now. Because the first thing didn't kill you. I'm sure you had more than one thing, but the second thing didn't kill you. So what makes you think that this one is? Go hard. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Leadership with Glass Steam with another message that could take your leadership to the next level. We got we got the the author the unstoppable author here with some just some some nuggets for you man we got some nuggets for you we have the author of uh, this book American Mindset Unstuck and Unstoppable by Jermaine E Martin E stands for Edward and I just want to just let you guys know that this is an extraordinary book. Yeah, um, go on Amazon, get this book. Um, it's a it's a it's a great read, and you will see why I say that when you get your hands on it. I mean, our own, you know, our own na native Washingtonian, um, right right from the projects, and he'll give you he'll give you the the details on that. I don't want to take away his fire, but. Uh, Jermaine is an author, entrepreneur. I mean, when 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 we first met, <laughs> and we first met at one of those networking meetings, and and I I was lost. I had never that was my first networking meeting, so, so I went there to build relationships and you know to find friends. And you know what was the funny thing is that was my first year um, in Virginia, and um, and after that. After that year, I would I would you know uh, go you know I was going back and forth to Miami, flying out um, with my company a lot. So I wasn't here, but when I was here, you know we always met up and talked and and kind of you know share you know always sharing ideas, I, always sharing ideas. I mean I could I could bounce any idea I want off of him, and he did the same. And uh, you know. And that relationship, man, it probably was forever, man. I mean, we've known each other forever. And um, it's just an interesting story how this book came about, man. And it correlates with what's going on today with the COVID-19 and having, you know, going through the whole, you know, pandemic and un unforeseen circumstances, events and and just how how you deal with those things. How do you how do you have an unstoppable mindset? How do you how do you how do you create that within yourself? I mean, it's easy to talk about, it's easy to write about, um, but how do you do it? You know, because I sometimes, you know, I want I want to hear from someone that has done it. I don't want to hear um, you know, from someone that 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 that's making up stuff. You know, and one of the things about this book that makes it so extraordinary and makes the author so extraordinary, uh, uh, let, let me let me say that instead, is that he's been through it. You know, he had the heartbreaks. He he you know, he he, you know, you know, went through the, you know, the hardships of the projects. He saw things. He saw things that 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 as a child you had no business seeing except if, if it was on television. And, you know, it was times when he had to stay home. It was times that he wanted to stay. He had to be locked up in his room, you know. And he had to develop this, this, this strength in him to persevere through all that. And that's what we, that's what, and I hope today I, I do a, I do service to kind of just, Taking, taking that, just bringing all that wisdom and those nuggets out so you, the audience, can take that 
and to take something from this interview that's usable and that you can um you can be encouraged. All right. Hey, hey, there he is. Last. There he is, up? man. <laughs> Man, 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 man. It is such a pleasure to have you here, man, to join us on uh, Leadership with Glass Steam, man. Our audience was looking forward to this. I mean, I mean, even when we were doing the test, man, people were jumping on because they just they just were so excited. And um, I just want to thank you beforehand and say thank you for your time. I know you have your family there and everything, um, you know, I, 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 I. I, I consider this an honor for you to be um, with us tonight. Oh, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. It means a lot uh, that you extended this invitation to me. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Hey, man, could you could you let people see the the backdrop a little bit that American mindset picture? Because you know um, <laughs> that is something that uh, yeah. Could you just put it right behind you? Because I want them to see the flag because this. And, and yourself, because that's, uh, yeah, right there. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. See? See, I told you guys, this man is serious. <laughs> hey, Jermaine, I, gave, I, gave, I just gave a quick introduction. And I just want you to kind of just, um, for, for, for those that want to know more, I mean, because I know that you grew up in Washington, D.C., but we don't know exactly where in Washington, D.C., and sure, uh, go in, go into that a little bit. And but before you do that, let's let's get a sense of what's going on in your life right now. What's going on in your family? How you guys handling things, man? Uh, we're doing great, man. Um, I, I, I'm sure everyone is facing their own unique set of challenges. Um, you know, as far as like, especially if you have kids. You know, the schools are closed. Uh, a lot of people are out of work right now. Uh, but as far as I go, man, I am, I'm really just trying to keep the mindset whereas I'm appreciating this time with my family, appreciating these moments with my children, you know, trying to, um, and, and, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's tough. I mean, I'm sure the other parents out there that are watching this know that it can be, a cha can be challenging. But again, I'm trying to look at it whereas this is an opportunity for me to appreciate a side of life that I wouldn't have if it wasn't for these challenges, you know, with things, the schools being closed and, um, you know, the things that we're facing. So I'm, I'm really just enjoying time with the kids right now. Man, that's, uh, that's so encouraging because, you know, in this, in this time of crisis, I mean, we, we've heard so much about relationships um, kind of being on the rocks because of this. And, and then we've heard, you know, the positive where, people have gotten closer together yes, um, because yes. of this. I mean, yes. and that seems to be your experience, man. Let us in on how, how's your wife, uh, you know, is she, <laughs> is, she, is she loving you more or she wish that you could just, you know, what is it, man? Come on, man. Give us hey, some, give man, us details, they, man. You know that the uh, my bride has been keeping a smooth sailing ship around the house. You know, I owe that to her. Um, you know, because things have been kind of in the air with the kids, you know, she teaches me the importance of scheduling, making sure the kids stay on track with their homework. And, uh, you know, not just everything just being up in the air, but kind, of, but kind of like following a system, a daily system, not just for our sanity, but for the kids' sake, for them to have something to look forward to, get, provide some stability around the home. Man, that, that is wonderful. I love the way you, you talk about, you know, building some routines and yeah. consistency. Yeah. Because... Because I know, I know. See the, re see, see, the viewers don't know, but I know where you got that from. So, so I'm going to put it out there. And um, I forgot what page was on. And it's the chapter that's called <laughs> The Barbershop. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Tell us about the barbershop. What you learned, what you learned from that barbershop and what you felt during that time because we we're gonna we're gonna correlate that with what's going on man we're gonna we're gonna keep this COVID-19 because we're gonna get through this man come on man come on give us some, right. give us some pointers man come on all right so uh so I can tell that Glass has been doing a little bit of reading I can tell so uh yeah uh, when I when I uh, lived in southeast in Washington DC you know uh, we had a neighborhood barbershop like a lot of the black most black communities in the U.S. and um you know I would go there, get my hair cut and everything. And, you know, 
going in a black barber, there's hair all over the floor and everything. So one of the barbers asked me, they said, hey, hey, young buck, um, how would you feel, you know, give you a couple bucks to come down here and sweep the hair every day? So I looked up at my grandfather and he's like, you want to do it? So I jumped all over it. So next thing you know, I would go down to the barber shop. This was during the summertime. So school was out. I would go down there, sweep the hair up probably any time, like probably around three or four times a day. You know, so um, have, being at my first job, you know, I, first time I had ever gotten paid for work. And so there were a lot of things that I learned, even though I was a, a very young, there's a lot of things I learned that I had not experienced before. When you go to work for someone else, it's different than your mom or your dad telling you, hey, do this. Um, this, is where, where, this was work for someone else. So their name and their reputation was on the line. So it was a different mindset as opposed to having that leniency at home. So anyway, you know, I would go down there, sweep hair and everything. Um, you know, the guys were really hard on me because not only were they paying me, but they were also, because they knew it was my first job, mm -hmm. they were trying to teach me um, discipline, the different values of work, a of, of, of work ethic. You know, the money wasn't anything to them. It was just that they appreciated, looking back, I can say that by the time it was tough. They were looking at this as an opportunity to teach this young man um, responsibility and how to earn money, you know? Um, so anyway, that was my first experience as far as like, you know, building a work ethic and so forth. Um, and there were a lot of positives to that, but there was also an opportunity in that situation for me to grow and to learn the value of, for myself. Because, you know, I love those barbers like family, but in my opinion, they started taking advantage. My duties went beyond sweeping hair. They end up having me polishing trophies, windexing the mirror, buffing, you know, buffing the floor instead of just sweeping it. So I had to do some self-reflection. And for a, young, for a young man, that was the first time that, that I had done that. And I realized early on that um, you have to always reevaluate your value. You know, the agreement was that I was supposed to sweep hair. Right. So I didn't, we didn't negotiate a fee for, for buffing trophies and, and windexing mirrors. So I had to renegotiate the terms. <laughs> as a, as anyway, a kid, you yes, did that? I did. I did. Wow. Um, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so um, anyway, it was, it was a lot to learn at the barbershop. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by that because as a kid, you understood that the this was the uh, job description and anything above and beyond exactly you needed to be compensated for yes yes and so i guess i guess that's what started your whole mindset for to to go entrepreneurial as opposed to you know working the 9 to 5 did that did that have anything to do with 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 your mindset growing up in college i mean i know you you know, you um, and I want you to touch on that. Um, you know, you got an engineering de degree and um, also you went on for an MBA. And I just I, is is that was your mindset ever since then? You, you um, ever since you were a kid to think about, hey, you know what? I'm not I'll, I'll probably start working a nine to five, but I'm not going to end up there. Talk about that, because because the reason why I want you to talk about that is because sometimes we feel that. Um, when when we just because we started somewhere mm -hmm. or just because we're going through something, it seems as if we're not going to get out. It seems that if we're not going to overcome mm -hmm. somehow and some of us has re, re, ha, have result, resorted to, you know, taking drugs, drinking because they just fall into despondency and be like, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So, so tell us about that journey and 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 throw some nuggets in there to get us unstuck. Sure. Um, so the barbershop, you know, at the time, I didn't know the value and the lessons I learned as far as like knowing my self worth. So, like I mentioned earlier, when I realized that my duties were going beyond what was previously negotiated, that was the time and the first time in my life that I actually got a sense of the. Of, of self value to know what I'm worth. Because if, if for me, when you ask me to do a job, I want to give it my all. I want right. to give it my best. But if I'm not being compensated for that, it, it doesn't work that way. So when you ask, when you mentioned about how those, those 
qualities, those things that I learned at the barbershop, how they carried on. Self-worth carries over in all areas of your life, mm. you yes. know, because you have a sense of who you are. And if you know that, you have a sense of where you want to go yes. and you know your value. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. What, what, about, what would you say to a person right now that's probably um, going to watch this in the future? And what would you say to someone that's just like down and out? I mean, because I'm going to, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. this is eventually going to be on IG and Facebook. Um, this, and, and eventually it's going to go into YouTube, the full interview. What would you say to someone right now that's going through the COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. and, and they're just saying to themselves, you know, this is too hard. This is too hard. I can't, I can't get through this. I can't, I can't overcome this. I just mm -hmm. can't. I just, I just can't. Uh, you know, what would you say to that person? Well, the first thing I would say if I was in their minds was to, would, tell, would be to tell them to don't, get, don't even use that word can't. Like, get that out your mind right away. Um, the second thing I would say is to take this, take an opportunity before you jump out there and expect something great to happen is to do some self-reflection. Um, we all have gone through things before in our lives, and I'm sure that this COVID-19 isn't the first, you know, valley that we had to walk through. So the first thing I would tell that person is to look at some things in your life that mm -hmm. you've gotten through, some things that you've accomplished, oh. some great things that you've done in your life. Yes. Use that as a foundation to catapult, to give you the confidence to get through what you're going through now. Because the first thing didn't kill you. I'm sure you had more than one thing, but the second thing didn't kill you. So what makes you think that this one is? You right. know, so to resort to your, to your beginnings, to your foundation, to the things that you've accomplished before, so that you can establish some self-worth to hang in there until things turn around. Wow. Wow. That's that's awesome. And, and and for your viewers out there, Jermaine is also a man of faith. So so just uh just just hang on to that nugget. We we're, we're we're going to circle back um to, <laughs> <laughs> to that statement. I mean, you know, sometimes we we go through life and 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 we we encounter surprises. I mean, things that we probably know will come in the future, but we just we just put it in the back burner. And then when they finally get there, we feel some type of way. And um, we don't, sometimes we don't do well with surprises. And I'm, I know that you're well familiar with surprises because, because you talk about how when your mom had, uh, had a special friend, Kurt, I think his yeah. name was Kurt. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Kurt. And, and you meeting him. I mean, walk us through that because I love, I love the story. Walk, walk us through that, man. All right, so um, so I'll, I'll, his name was Curtis, but I called him Kurt in the book. Well, Kurt, he was a black man, but he wasn't from the projects. So um, he was a military man. And my mom, for the viewers who don't know, my mom never married my biological father. So she brought Curtis into our lives and Curtis was a military man. Um, he was different from the men that grew up in the projects right, right off the bat. You know, this was a stand up guy. Um, very disciplined. You could tell from his voice. You could tell the way his, his mannerisms, his behavior. So she met this man. And at first, you know, I was still set in my project ways, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really sad to think that, especially, you know, me being a child at the time, to be in some way embarrassed or um, intimidated by this man who didn't speak or act and talk like the people from the hood. You know, it's and, and um, it's really sad to say that because that that same mentality, unfortunately, still carries over today. You right. know, when you're when you're in the hood, you're expected to act a certain way. You're expected to act too cool for this, too cool for that. Well, um, sometimes you can be too cool for your own good. good. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, um, you know, thankfully, I was able to to open my arms and embrace Curtis. So Curtis ended up becoming my stepfather and being raised in a military household. You know, he moved us out of the projects. I Now I'm living into this military household. First time I had been around discipline. First time I had been told that I had to make my bed every day. First time I had to, ever had to do yard work. So this point in my life was what I consider the discipline phase. You know, the, the, the school of hard knocks, the tough love. You know, um, to, to realize the value of that. 
you know? And at first I resisted. But then what happened was, is that it turned around, whereas instead of me um, rebelling against this discipline, I started seeing how I was growing from it, how I was becoming a man, how I was wanting to take pride in my things, my home, my yard, my bed. So I no longer had to be told to do these things, you know? So those hard knocks, that, 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 that uh, tough love ended up in a positive way, turning me into a man. Wow. Yeah, because you know that that's a that's a that's an interesting story because I I love that story because I could see you, you know, with your little with your little <laughs> fists and everything resisting, <laughs> acting acting like you're bad, like you yeah. ain't my daddy. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I could see you doing that. Yeah, you're not and, my and, real dad. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could, because because you know what? Because like there's there's so many there's so many stories of people going through this COVID-19 pandemic and quarantine situation where they they are just resisting it, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people that have gone to jail because they refuse to wear masks in stores. They 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 refuse to to do the sh uh, social distancing thing and this resistance, resistance, mm -hmm. resistance. And and you're sharing this story of where you resisted, and I want you to go deeper into the story about when you had to. Uh, uh, I think you had to clean up the backyard or something. I yeah, want you to go, I want you, Yeah, I want you. I want you to go into that story a little bit, where 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 people can get some can get some nuggets from. There's a time. There's a time to. There's a time in the beginning that you will feel uncomfortable and you will resist, but you have to understand that resistance works against you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for you. Absolutely. You know, you know that the you know the streams they flow. <laughs> they yeah. go with the flow. You throw you you throw a leaf on uh, in in the water, it, it will go with the flow. Yes. Easy. Absolutely. You know man. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. you know it's it's easier to, it's easier to go with the current than against it. Yeah. And so we 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 want to be very careful of where we're resisting. Like mm -hmm. you know, I shouldn't have got fired. Um, 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 she shouldn't have left me um, because you know this is when I really need mm -hmm. someone and everything. We gotta we gotta really um, get a handle on that resistance and come to a place where we say, okay, let me build some routines. Let me build some new routines in my mm -hmm. life, or let me let me kind of adapt to the situation. So give us that story about sure. raking those leaves, man, because I know you are you're a good <laughs> leaf raker. Go ahead. <laughs> it brings back some laughs, man. So uh so when we when we moved out of the projects, we actually moved into Southern Maryland where we actually had a yard. You know, there weren't too many yards in the projects. <laughs> so I had a almost an acre of, of, of lawn I had to rake up. And so I was under your assumption that when my stepdad said, hey, we're going to pick Saturday morning and rake the leaves, I'm thinking we'll break this up, some now, some tomorrow. So we started raking these leaves, and I got tired. So I said to him, I said, I put the rake down. I said, hey, whew, I'm going to finish the rest of mine tomorrow. And my stepdad looked at me and says, no, we're going to finish it today. I said, I'm done, man. I put my rake down. I said, I'm going to tell my mom. Now, it's still my mom, you know. <laughs> so make a long story short, man, my stepfather, he looked at me. He says, you know what they say? They said, a hard head makes a soft behind. <laughs> so I picked that rake up, and I started raking. But coming to that word resist, I was resisting. And so when I picked up the rake, I had no long, I dropped my resist card. I was no longer resisting. Now, at first, when I, when I picked up the rake, I thought I was gonna be, keep, continue to be angry, frustrated, but what happened was I changed my mind. I said, you know what? He wants me to rake these leaves. I'm gonna rake them the best I can do. And at first I was doing it to kind of show out for him, but all of a sudden so something changed in me. I started taking pride in my work. You know, I was like, I'm gonna do a good job. And I got this, 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 this different mindset, this burst of energy to start raking and raking and raking. And he ended up hugging me and everything. But the next thing you know, man, he never had to tell me to rake the leaves again. I was out there raking them because now it was my yard. It wasn't his anymore. 
So I, I didn't anticipate that lesson. I didn't anticipate that things were going to turn out that way. Whereas in, for something that I was so resistant to, I would end up not only doing it, but embracing it and taking pride in it and doing it myself without having to be asked. You know, so going to what you said as far as this COVID stuff, yeah, there's people out there that are resisting, you know, the guidelines and so forth, but there are also people out there resisting the lessons, the, 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 the beauty, the challenges, the things that are, the positive things that are coming out of this. You know, some people have been on the verge of, hey, I want to switch careers or I want to spend more time with my family. You know, if you take your resist hat off, next thing you know, you're getting these blessings that you didn't have before. So it's all about the way that you look at it, you know, but you got to take your hat off and you got to put the resistance hat down. Hey, man, I hope you guys are writing this down. Take your resistance hat off. <laughs> <laughs> take, take that hat off or go in the backyard and start waking those Wake music, music, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that that was a that was a funny story, man. Because you know the 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 what I what I like about this man was because you know he he brought that discipline, and but he mm -hmm. also brought that that father figure. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I know there was a there was a lot of temptations out there mm -hmm. in the hood. I mean, like you know, you got drugs. I remember you you talking about um um. Um, all the drug dealers uh, seeming to be, you know, seeming to have a lot of money because there was always, you know, the benzos parked in front yeah. of, the, parked in front of the homes. Man, go into that, go into that for us a little bit, and 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 let us let us understand um, Kurt's contribution to you not falling into the the traps that many others have had fallen into. Sure, man. The the main thing that that Curtis did to me, man, is he he devalued that short game. Um, you know, being in the projects, I was, everything was a short game, you know, everything's mm -hmm. a short game, like do this to get that, do this to get that, that immediate gratification, you know, so by me being exposed to a military person, the word sacrifice started becoming part of my vocabulary. And I realized that, you know, yeah, it was cool. You know, these guys had these cars, the gold, the, everything, but I knew that it was a short game. You know, I, I mean, you had to have the car, but then you had to, 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 to keep it at your grandparents' house. You, couldn't have, you didn't have a house to pull it in front of, you know, <laughs> or you had to put it in your, in your mom's name. So, you know, I didn't want to play that game, you know, as flashy as it was. And, and it, I, I mean, I had friends that did it, but it wasn't something that I would, that I knew better. And I knew that it wasn't going to be something that was going to be um, sustainable long term. You know, so it was enough for me to wave at those guys and friends that had the flashy cars that were selling drugs. But I just I just couldn't do that, you know, and, and I and I should be careful to say I couldn't do that. God didn't allow me to do that. It was grace that I didn't um, take those chances, you know, because I'm, I'm no better than anyone else I grew up with. You know, Yo, man, I, I think I think Kurt had a lot to do with that, man, yeah. because um I mean, I know my father used to scare the bejesus out of me. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't afraid of police. The mm -hmm. police, I was afraid of my dad. Yeah. Because my dad told me, he said, if you ever go to jail, I'll be waiting for you when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all that he had to say. You, 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 you turn around to the guard. Let me back in there. Let me back in there. Hey, man, I went and cut that yard. I was raking every every Saturday. I had yard duty. <laughs> you know, I don't care how much my friends will call me out. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I, I'll, be, I'll be a punk anytime, boy. I'm not going to jail. Yeah. My dad, you know how my dad is. Yeah. And so um, I admire Kirk for that, man. I really appreciate him. But you know what? You got a secret, man. What's that? You got a secret. <laughs> you you almost you almost had a run in with the law, man. You yeah. almost had that Rodney King moment. I did. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, hey, man. Because sometimes we get blindsided by stuff. Yeah. I mean, this was this was this was clearly a a a a a a, 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 a mistaken identity thing, right? And 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 you almost got caught up, man. Tell us yeah. about that, man. I did almost get caught up, man. My um. Even after I left, you know, I'm sure you know, man, even after you leave the hood, you, you still got buddies and friends there. So every chance I get, I went back. I went back to the hood. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And um, 
You didn't learn, did you? I didn't. <laughs> so, so one day I uh, was driving my mom's car. It was a little Nissan Sentra, nothing fancy, but it was clean. And um, I go to my grandmother's house, and I leave. Now she, at the time, this was in the the mid, probably around the mid '90s, man, early '90s, mid '90s, when the drug game was off the chains in D.C. And uh, she lived like right on one of the, the the main drug strips in D.C., 58th Street. And I was leaving there. Me and my buddy were leaving. Turn out the projects, make a left onto the road to go shooting in Maryland. As soon as I hit the left to shoot into right before the Maryland line, I hear whoop whoop. Ooh, I hate that sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I grew up with that sound. I hate that sound. And you know how to hit it just a little bit. Whoop. Yep. Yep. So um, I pulled over. I said, it's nothing for me to worry about. You know, I didn't have anything in the car. My boy didn't have anything on him. Everything was in order, my papers, my license. So he pulled us over. Two cops, two police in the car. One of them gets out, asked me, before he even got to the car, I already had my license and registration in my hand, which ticked him off because, you know, he was thought I was kind of like putting it into space. So he ran it and everything. Then goes back to his car, runs everything. I guess everything checked out. Then all of a sudden him and the other cop both both approach my car. They tell me to get tell me and my boy to get out the car. So I'm like, oh Lord. And I said to him, I said, why do I have to get out of the car? Ooh. Bad, bad question right there. You the, you're you you you're that guy, huh? Yeah, right. So we might have some young folks, so I won't use the language that he told me. But anyway, I ended up getting out the car. <laughs> And he told me to put my resistance. hands. Resistance. Yeah. <laughs> I still had the resistance hat on. So I go to the back, uh, put my hands on the trunk of the uh, trunk of the car and everything. They check the car, check the inside of the car, look for something, couldn't find nothing. I was shaking, man. Long story short, gave me, threw my license on the trunk, told me have a nice day, got back in the car. I was so angry. That was I was I started crying. I was so mad, man. Mm. And I looked at him and I said, I know why you pulled me over. I understand and whatever. And I went on about my way. So I ended up having a um I told my uncle about it. My uncle was a DC police at the time. And he said, Jermaine, man, there's nothing you could really do about that. Think about it. You're in a drug hotspot, Maryland plates on your car. They're they're trying to they they see something that looks out of place, suspect, they're gonna pull you over. You can go file it and all that, but is it really worth your time? So it took me a while to get over that, man. But also there was a lesson that mm -hmm. I got from yeah. that as far Let's as like how you handle um, a situation like that. You know, number one, when you get pulled over, man, there's no judge, there's no jury, there's no witnesses there. It's just you and the guy with the badge and the gun. So the best thing you can do is cooperate and go on about your business. And if you got some beef, take it up a later time, you know. So I learned, man, that respect um, for authority, even if you might not like that person, respect will get you further than being disrespectful. You know, um, you can talk junk all day, man, but if you're, if, if your behind's laid out in the middle of the street beaten up, it's not going to do you any good, man. So yeah, I, I wrote about that because I feel like a young, a lot of young people in the black community, man, they have this, this anger in them. And a lot of it is justified, is justified. But if your point is to get to a better place, man, you gotta, you, you have to always wait for your time. Timing is everything. You know, timing is everything, man. You know, get put yourself in a position of power before you attempt to exert power. You know, make sure that you actually have power. Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is um, about that situation and is that it, it totally blindsided you. You didn't, mm -hmm. you didn't see it. You didn't see it coming. I mean, here you are, law-abiding citizen, you know, hanging with your friends and everything. I mean, you know, so, you know, you, you went back, you know, you know. Now, you say, you say law-abiding now. He pulled me over on Tuesday. I don't know if I would have been law-abiding on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled you over when you were law-abiding. When I was... <laughs> yeah, okay. So he pulled you over at the right time. I mean, but, but you know, sometimes we, sometimes things like that happen, man. I yeah. Mean, a lot of people um that like i said before that were were fired um subsequently fired from their jobs when mm -hmm. covid-19 and i was reading some reports um this this afternoon while i was at work and you know i work for the 
But one of my clients is the CDC and the NIH and uh, FDA. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I just happened to kind of stroll on, on their website and, and then I saw some other, this little post that was saying Macy's closed. Mm -hmm. Now when a, when a huge department store like Macy's or, or, or JC Penney's, um, those big conglomerates, you know, close down, I'm not really thinking about the CEOs and the owners. I'm just thinking about all those workers on the floor, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the ones on the cash register and, um, you know, the, the, you know, the security guards and, and all of that. I mean, people are really losing their minds out yeah. here because, yeah. because this was unforeseen. Mm -hmm. They didn't see this, this COVID thing. It was brewing under the surface for some time. It's been like it's been brewing under the surface for like two years because I heard about it early uh, two thousand nineteen, mm -hmm. and this Wuhan stuff. And I was like, um, oh, that they probably doing some some crazy over yeah. there, testing something crazy over there. It'll never get over here. Yeah, that's what everyone was thinking, you know. Yeah. And then next thing you know, boom! Just like the police stopped you. Next thing you know. You're you're being asked to stay home, and mm -hmm. and and then, and then they they have these uh <laughs> these so-called alarmists that that's telling you, hey, we might go into martial law. You know, people are gonna you know start knocking on your doors and making sure that you go get vaccinated and everything. Mm -hmm. And so these are kind of things that you know scares the hell out of people, yeah. man. Yeah, I know. And, and 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 you know what? I I think. I think, you know, sometimes we think our past um, was just unjust. It was unfair. Mm -hmm. But I, sometimes I, I'm, 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 I'm encouraged to think that somehow we're stronger because of, of our past. Yes. We yeah. can deal with things because of our past. Because when I'm at home, I still feel free. I yeah. still feel that I could go outside, sit down, read a good book. And, you know, I don't do the TV thing, uh, you know, too much, you know, mm -hmm. but I can, I can read a good book. I can, I can, I can talk to my parents every day. I can, mm -hmm. I can zoom, you know, my buddies. And I, I still feel like life isn't going on. I'm in the process of finishing my first book. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, you know, 2020 hasn't stopped for me. Mm -hmm. And for some, it has stopped because just like the policemen stopped you, mm -hmm. they they just stayed there. They they resisted. Yeah, and they did yeah. get the Rodney King yeah. um, um, beat down. <laughs> <laughs> they did get the Rodney King beat down because they're letting COVID nineteen just yeah. Rodney King the hell out of them. Yeah, that's you true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so so, do you think that what you have gone through prepared you? for for something like this to this magnitude i would say yes absolutely um you can never you know it's hard to compare and, and also you don't know what's coming next but i definitely will say everything that we go through is is part of what i can what i consider foundation it's building our foundation just like a house like a house built on a solid foundation the wind comes the foundation is what keeps it steady so all of the hardships that we go through the way that we, it's all about the way that we look at them. Those can be our foundations, you know? So like when COVID rolls around the corner, instead of freaking out or, or panicking, as bad as it is, say to yourself, wait a minute, I lost my job five years ago, or I lost this two years ago and I made it through. You know, what's, what's different about this? Like you got to resort to where your strengths are. Every one of us has them. Everybody has something that they've overcome. Everyone has a strength. Everyone has something that they can hang their hat on and, and, and think of and focus on until this new thing passes over. Yeah. And, and, it's, and we understand it's, it's different when you're going through it. Yeah. And, and, and I want to talk about that right now because Jermaine has some real low moments in, in his past. And I want to just touch on it a little bit. Um, um, is one of the chapters on in, in your book that talks about the knock at the door. Mm. You know, when you when you were going through the whole thing with your parents getting a divorce and everything, Paul in this situation 
and everything. I just want you to kind of let us know what you what you went through and how did you resolve that? Well, wow, that that was uh, one of the most difficult chapters for me to write. Mm. And knock on the door was about when at the time it was my my two younger sisters and myself. You know, we were home and my mom was home and my dad and my mom were already, you know, separated. So it was just the three of us in the home. So in the middle of the night, I hear this knock on the door and I'm, you know, a child. So I'm, I'm, I think I was, I don't know, probably like maybe 16 years old. I'm waiting for my mom to get up and go answer the door because it's like two o'clock in the morning and no one ever answered the door. So I got up and I opened the door, still waiting for my mom to come down the hall and say, who's at my door at two in the morning? And I opened the door and there's police standing there and my mom still doesn't come. And I, and the police asked me, is everyone okay in the home? And I, I said, yes, what's the problem? And I'm like, mom, the police at the door. Find out that the police are there because my mom had attempted suicide and wow. they came there to make sure that the home, everyone, my sisters, including myself were okay. And it floored me, man. It floored me. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. I knew that, you know, she was going through it, you know, with my, my parents, with them splitting up and everything. But that was one of the craziest days, if not the crazy. You talk about COVID. That, was my, that wasn't my COVID-19. That was my COVID-55. My COVID-55, right. right. I mean, that, right. Was, that was some serious pain, man. I was a right. child, you know. Um, and that was, that was probably the toughest thing that I've ever had to deal with. And so when you ask, like, how do we get through things like that? It took a lot of different things for me to get through that. It wasn't one thing. Um, it took a lot of family. It took a lot of friends to keep, to keep me on track. And it Faith, took God. It, yeah, it definitely took God. I mean, I wasn't going to church back then, but thankfully his grace was over me to protect me from myself, you know. Um, but there was one thing if you ask me, how did I keep it together? Mm, yeah. I would say the thing that helped me keep it together was that I knew in my heart that bad never wins. Mm. It might take tomorrow. It might take 50 years, but bad never wins ever. And I said to myself as a child that one day I will have my reckoning. I will make all of this pain turn into something productive and good to, to not only help me, but to help somebody else who has gone through it. And so that gave me a target to go after. Like I, I had to one day have my day, whereas I could share this story to help someone else who might be going through this. So that's how I got through it. That was my, but there, like I said, there were a lot of things and a lot of people and a lot of love that held my hand along the way, but I did have a target. I knew that I had to have my day to, to completely overcome that. And it, and, it, and it damn sure wasn't going to be laying on the street somewhere on drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, bad doesn't last forever, man. Yeah. It's, it's hey, we got to remember that, man. Hey, hey, you guys, bad doesn't last. <laughs> Jermaine said it so, so well. Bad doesn't last, man. And there, bad there's a, um, yeah, life, man. Like, I, I will always remember this quote by Les Brown, man. Um, as tough as life could be, sometimes life just gets tired of whipping you. Yeah. You know, you just got to hang in there and hang in there until your turn, you know, and while you're hanging in there, have some fun. Yeah. You know, you got to keep your head up. You got to do things that keep you in a positive spirit. Now it's a process. It's a challenge. And, you, and, and, and not every day is going to be a good day. Sometimes no. you might just, I always, my wife always tells us sometimes, sometimes I just need to go to sleep and sleep on it. Yeah. You know, like sometimes you have to sleep on it. Sometimes you need to listen to music. Sometimes you need to work out. Sometimes whatever you got to do, um, I have a term that I use to whatever you got to do to create a gap. Mm. Whatever you do have to do to create a gap in your space, in your time, mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. to allow God to do his thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to create a void. You know, you can't, things don't happen when you're in it, when you're in the chaos, when you're, and the chaos doesn't mean things that are external. The chaos can be internal, you know, so you've got to create a gap externally and internally for, so that God can give you some peace so that you can think and get yourself out of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, you, you talk about, you, you know, in the book, you talk about, you know, getting unstuck and being in your comfort zone. And I really love the way you talk about embracing change, how in order to grow, we need to embrace change. And I think um, in this moment, we need to embrace this, you know, and what, what, here's, here's what I mean by embracing it. I don't, I don't mean, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's bad and I'm going to just, I'm just going to stiffen up and, 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 and go through this. No, I'm not talking about that. What I mean by embracing change is that you acknowledge that things are not the way they used to be. Mm -hmm. Things are different. That's, that's, that's clear. Any sane person, that's, that's, that's common sense. It's bad, right? But like Jermaine said, what, what are some of the good things about this? What are some of the projects that you could do, which you, you, can, you can get done? Because the, the, the most valuable thing about this time is that they gave us a time. This thing, this pandemic has given us some time. It given us some time to think, reflect, to connect. I mean, more than ever, and I want Jermaine to end with this, how he's connected with his family because he has two young children that's going through this. And every time, every time I talk to him, those kids are jumping around the place. They're not in some corner sad. They're jumping around the place. Either they're doing hula hoops on top of his head. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy every single time. And I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. I really don't. I really, I really don't know how he does it. And, you know, you, you, you hear, you know, his wife is happy. I mean, everybody's in the house is happy. And that's, and that's leadership people. That's leadership people. If you, if you're going out there trying to be, a, trying to become a great leader, leading people and having this big grand dream, and you don't have your house in order, you are sadly mistaken as a leader. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about. It comes from self, and then it comes, and then it goes into home, mm -hmm. foundation. Those are your foundation, mm -hmm. and then you prepare. You're prepared to go out there and and inspire somebody. Mm -hmm. Don't come out here trying to inspire us, and your life is all messed up. Your home is all, <laughs> you know. Don't don't do that, because you suck us in into that, to that energy. Yeah, and that's why I bring people like Jer um, like Jermaine and interview them because I want you to just hear um, not, not some, 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 some guy that you or some woman that you can't even identify with tell you you got to persevere. And then when you Google their background, you know, <laughs> they're from somewhere in Beverly Hills. Their dad was the CEO of Mars, <laughs> candy bars. <laughs> You know, and when he left, they, they gave him, you know, a billion dollars and uh, with the golden parachute. No, no, you can't identify with that. So this, 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 this channel, we bring real people, real heroes, real fathers, especially fathers. That's why I'm, I'm concentrating on the men right now, because the, the women, they're, they're always holding it down. They're always holding it down. Mm -hmm. And so I'm bringing I'm bringing these these men and women out here that are real that are going that are, that has gone through it and they're still on the journey mm -hmm. of leadership they're still on the journey they're still learning they're just like you mm -hmm. they can relate and when you find someone that you can relate to you for somehow that strengthen us that's why we can't stay by well, that's why we can't stay inside now because we got to be around people we got to i mean uh, by my house and, and it's a very affluent neighborhood. People get dressed to go to Walmart <laughs> on, on, on Fridays and Saturdays. That's, that's, the, that's the, the spot, man. The parking lot is packed. <laughs> Walmart is the new club, y'all. <laughs> it's, it's packed. That and Giant. That and Giant. Yeah. That's Giant. Y'all, <laughs> giant, giant always got food. 
I mean, I mean, that's the that's we 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 somehow were stronger, united. We stand, divided. We fall. That's been ingrained in us, and and it's, it's, and it's not just the U.S. It's worldwide. So when you see somebody like Jermaine, you're like, man, if if he can do it, I know I can do it. And don't think that he doesn't have his 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 turbulent times. Mm -hmm. It's just that he handles it differently, and that's what I want you to see. It's a mindset. It's not. It's not what happens to you. It's 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 how you respond mm -hmm. to what happens to you. Because this time and this time, this is your defining moment. Mm -hmm. For some of you, this is your defining moment. And you have the choice whether this time is going to define you or you're going to define it. And I hope and pray that you've decided to step out, show out, and define it. Define. Show the world who you are. Show them your strength. Show them your character. Bring out your leadership. If you're making videos, bring that out. Show people that you care about them. If you're, if you're coaching people, show some people that you care about them. Mm -hmm. Give some of your products away. Give some of your services away. Give your time away. You know, reach out to people, show your leadership, because now is the time. Now is the time to show up and show out. And Jermaine, I just want I just want to to uh, to just ask you to just close out and and just just talk about a little bit about how you keep your family so happy during this time. What are some of your secrets, man? <laughs> well, the first thing is, I would say, man, is uh, you have to be in the moment. You have to be in the moment, you know, um, and, I'll, and I'll be honest, you know, when this thing first kicked off, you know, I have my, I still have my phone in one hand while I have the kids, but I was trying to do this, trying to email this person, trying to check on this and trying to also do the homework or help with the homework at the same time. It, it pulls you, it pulls you to, it pulls you apart, man. So you, you have to be in the moment. And, and when I say have to be, I don't mean in a negative way. That's where the enjoyment is. If you actually are present in your circumstances, you'll realize that there are things in, their circ in those circumstances that you can enjoy, that you can, that you can build upon, that you can learn from, you know, that you can grow from. It's just you have to be willing to stop and look around. You know, um, for me, I haven't ridden, for example, I haven't ridden a bike in years. You know, now I'm riding with the kids on the bikes. You know, I mean, that to me, it's... it's I'm clearing my head, you know, I'm, I'm getting my mind off of things. I'm getting my mind off of me in that moment, you know? And, and so I will say like, it's just, you have to surrender and accept the circumstances and look around you and figure it, figure out what are the positive things that are coming out of this? Of course, I know what the negatives are. You can, you can pop open your email or check the news to find those, but what are the positive things that you can get from this. How can I come out of this better than what than I was when I went into it? Okay. You know, and and I would just like like to mention, you know, like Glass in the beginning talked about, you know, we actually met going through something. You know, we met years ago when when there the last great recession. You know, right. And we didn't know what we were doing. You know, we were part of us was trying to find a job, part of us was trying to find work, and the other part of us was just dreaming. We were dreaming about what we could accomplish. You know, and I will tell you this, man, time flies, time flies. And I would suggest that you use your time wisely because, you know, I never thought back in when I met Glastein that I would have a book out, you know. So I use my time, my downtime, those circumstances, those those valleys and those down moments to just write, 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 you know, because what else was I going to do? You know, work and write, work and write, work and write. You know, so I ask you, what can you produce? What dreams have you been sitting on that you could use this situation to, not that you can do it overnight, not that you can do it in five minutes, not that you can do it in a week, not, maybe that you can't even do it in a year, but what could you do to start the ball rolling? You know, like what little steps can you take now? Right. Like what strategies can you put in place to get you to where you want to go? 
you know? Yeah. So I would just take, like I said, take some time to think about, you know, what's around you, what you have in your hand and, 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 and make this count, you know, come out of this stronger. Hey man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys this to, to just kind of summarize what Jermaine said. I mean, the thing is this, um, money, you can, you can lose money and get it back. You can, you can, you can say, you can even save it. <laughs> but, but the thing with, you know, some people say time is money, but time is something far more precious than money. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why you can't save it. You can't save it. Once that second is gone, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's ticking. Your clock is ticking. You don't, You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Mm -hmm. If somebody would have asked you to, three months ago, oh, we, um, are we going into a pandemic? You would have been like, nah, that's impossible. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we're in it. But by God's grace, by somehow, we've been highly favored. Yeah. That a lot of us the, the the biggest impact is that we we're quarantined. Mm -hmm. None of our family, none of my family members are sick. Everybody's happy. Everybody's like, hey, on 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 Zoom. <laughs> I'm I don't have to go to work this week. <laughs> and my boss said we still getting paid. <laughs> you know, or or one of my friends called me. He said he said, did you know I calculated it. My unemployment check is a little bit more, more <laughs> than my regular salary. So I'm good. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, so 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 we we've been we've been blessed, man. These we've are crazy times. I yeah. mean, it's crazy. Crazy like times. Some of us are, are blessed. Count your blessings, what you have. Like like the man, like 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 uh like when the man was standing in front of God and God said, and he said, I I don't have anything, and God said, What's in your hand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so always notice what's in your hand. Jermaine, I just want to thank you. And I just want to, want you to just give a quick plug, man. How can people connect with you, man? And how can they get your book? How can they oh, get your man. book? American you pick, Monster. You can pick this up on Amazon. Um, you can meet, you can connect with me on IG at uh, the Jermaine Martin. Twitter, Jermaine E. Martin. Facebook, Jermaine Martin. Check me out. And if you if you if you buy a hundred of them, he'll send you this flag. <laughs> <laughs> he'll send you this flag. The, the exact the, the the one that he's wearing around his neck. He will send that to you. Hey, that's in the Smithsonian, man. <laughs> it's, I put they 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 picked it up and put it under underneath the Constitution. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Hey, man. Hey, man. See, hey, see you guys next Wednesday. Th thank you, Jermaine, for, for joining us. We love the conversation. We're much better for it. Thank you. We're about to. Hey, if you want to see more leadership tips that can help you on your journey, check out this video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.